GameSpy was a provider of online multiplayer and matchmaking middleware for video games. The company originated from a Quake fan site founded by Mark Surfash in 1996, after the release of a multiplayer server browser for the game, QSPY. Surfash licensed the software under the GameSpy brand to other video game publishers through a newly established company, GameSpy Industries which also incorporated his planet network of video game news and information websites, and GameSpy.com. GameSpy merged with IGN in 2004. By 2014, its services had been used by over 800 video game publishers and developers since its launch. In August 2012, the GameSpy Industries division was acquired by mobile video game developer Glue Mobile. IGN retained ownership of the GameSpy.com website. In February 2013, IGN's new owner, Ziff Davis, shut down IGN's secondary sites, including GameSpy's network. This was followed by the announcement in April 2014 that GameSpy's service platform would be shut down on May 31, 2014. History The 1996 release of its software's video game Quake, one of the first 3D multiplayer action games to allow play over the Internet, furthered the concept of players creating and releasing mods or modifications of games. Mark Surfash saw the need for hosting and distribution of these mods and created Planet Quake, a Quake-related hosting and news site. The massive success of mods catapulted Planet Quake to huge traffic and a central position in the burgeoning game website scene. Quake also marked the beginning of the internet multiplayer real-time action game scene. However, finding a Quake server on the internet proved difficult as players could only share IP addresses of known servers between themselves or post them on websites. To solve this problem, a team of three programmers formed Spy Software and created QSPY. This allowed the listing and searching of Quake servers available across the Internet. Surfash licensed QSPY and became the official distributor and marketer while retaining the original programming team. QSPY became Quake Spy and went on to be bundled with its Quake World update, an unprecedented move by a top-tier developer and huge validation for Quake Spy. With the release of the Quake engine-based game Hexen 2, Quake Spy added this game to its capabilities and was renamed Game Spy 3D. In 1997 Mark Surfash licensed Game Spy 3D from Spy Software and created Game Spy Industries. In 1999, Game Spy received angel investment funding from entrepreneur David Burkis. The company released mp3spy.com, a software browser allowing people to browse and connect to online radio feeds, such as those using Nullsoft's Shoutcast. GameSpy received $3 million in additional funding from the UK per companies, an investment group headed by Hollywood agent Michael Ovitz and Southern California supermarket billionaire Ronald Burkle. The expanding company's websites included the games portal, GameSpy.com, created in 1999, the Planet Network, a collection of Planet websites devoted to popular video games as well as the genre-related websites, 3 Action Planet, RPG Planet, Sport Planet and Strategy Planet, Forum Planet, the network's extensive message board system, and File Planet which was one of the largest video game file download sites. It also included platform-specific sites, but these were consolidated into GameSpy.com. Only classic gaming remained separate. Forum Planet and File Planet were services offered by GameSpy and were not part of the Planet Network. In 2000, GameSpy received additional investment funding from the Ziff Davis publishing division ZDNet.com and from Guillemot Corporation. GameSpy shut down its Radio Spy division, backing away from the online music market which was dominated by peer-to-peer -peer applications such as Napster and Nutella. In 2001, GameSpy's corporate technology business grew to include software development kits and middleware for video game consoles. 
such as Sony's PlayStation 2, Sega's Dreamcast and Microsoft's Xbox. In March 2004, IGN and GameSpy Industries merged, and was briefly known as IGN, GameSpy before formalizing their corporate name as IGN Entertainment. Also in 2000, GameSpy turned GameSpy 3D into GameSpy Arcade and purchased Roger Wilco, mplayer.com and various assets from Harm. The mplayer service was shut down and the Roger Wilco technology is improved and incorporated into GameSpy Arcade. GameSpy Arcade was the company's flagship matchmaking software, allowing users to find servers for different online video games and connect the user to game servers of that game. GameSpy also published the Roger Wilco voice chat software, primarily meant for communication and coordination in team-oriented games where users join a server to chat with other users on the server using voice communication. This software rivaled the other major voice chat software Ventrilo and TeamSpeak. The companies, powered by GameSpy, technology enabled online functionality in over 300 PC and console games. In 2005, GameSpy added the PlayStation Portable and Nintendo DS to its stable-supported platforms. In March 2007, GameSpy added the Wii as another supported platform. Shut down Big D was bought from IGN Entertainment by Glue Mobile in August 2012, and proceeded in December to raise integration costs and shut down servers for many older games, including Star Wars. Battlefront, Sniper Elite, Microsoft Flight Simulator X and Never Winter Nights, with no warning to developers or players, much to the outrage of communities of those games. GameSpy Technologies remained operational as a separate entity since, in February 2013, following the acquisition of IGN Entertainment by Ziff Davis, IGN's secondary sites were shut down ending GameSpy's editorial operations. In April 2014, Blue announced that it would shut down the GameSpy servers on May 31, 2014, so its developers could focus on work for Glue's own services. Games that still used GameSpy are no longer able to offer online functionality or multiplayer services through GameSpy, while some publishers announced plans to migrate GameSpy-equipped games to other platforms. Some publishers, such as Nintendo, did not, particularly due to the age of the affected games. Electronic Arts, in particular, announced 24 PC games, including titles such as Battlefield 2, the Crisis series, and the Star Wars Battlefront series, that would be affected by the end of Game Spy service. For certain games, fan-created mods were developed in order to restore online functionality with alternative servers. One such mod for the PC version of Halo was officially incorporated into a patch for the game released by Bungie in May 2014, the game Spy Debriefings. The game Spy Debriefings was a party-style discussion between editors of Game Spy and IGN Entertainment on that week's gaming news. The game Spy Debriefings was the 25th most popular podcast under the category Games and Hobbies on iTunes. It was however infamous for the crew's frequent propensity to derail the conversation from video games into explicit content or in-depth discussions about nerd culture. The main crew at the show's denouement of the game Spidey Briefings consisted of Anthony Gallagher, then of IGN Entertainment, previously of 1UP.com, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and GameSpy, Ryan Scott, then of GameSpy, previously the executive editor for the 1UP.com Network's Reviews Department, and the reviews editor for both Computer Gaming World and Games for Windows. The official magazine, Scott Bromley, formerly of IGN Entertainment, Brian Altano, humor editor and graphic designer for IGN.com slash GameSpy, frequent guests included, Arthur G. Ies, formerly of IGN Entertainment, 
Brian Miggles, formerly of IGN Entertainment and GamesPy, Will Tuttle, former editor-in-chief of GamesPy, Jack DeVries, former editor of GamesPy. On July 30, 2011, the GamesPy debriefings ended with an episode consisting of only the main crew. Following its conclusion, they launched a fundraising drive on Kickstarter which resulted in the release of their own popular podcast, The Comedy Button. The Comedy Button is similar in content to the later game Spidey briefings, with a renewed focus on humorous discussions and listener emails rather than the in-depth discussion of recent video games like the early debriefings. As of January 1, 2016, the comedy button consists of 210 episodes.